The next story you're about to hear is about 400 years old, give or take a month or two, and there's a number of different strands to it. I'm spoiled for choice, really, as to where to begin. I could begin here in the Great Hall at McGee College, where the University of Ulster Choir is rehearsing, along with the choir of the University of Aberdeen and the South Bank Symphonia from London, under the baton of Dr Sean Ryan. Or I could begin here in the Foyle Arts Building, attached to the McGee campus, where I met the composer of that music, Lawrence Roman, as well as the poet whose work inspired that music, Sam Burnside. Or perhaps I could start off here in St Columns Cathedral, very nearly the oldest thing in the story, where the Dean of the Cathedral, William Martin, is putting the organ through its paces. But I've decided to begin the story in a quiet street whose name pulls all these strands together. A commonly asked question in pub quizzes in Derry, Londonderry used to be, which street in the city has only one house in it? Cognoscenti will know that the answer was Springham Street. But perhaps a more difficult question might have been, how did it get the name Springham? Well, the answer to that question is to be found in a summary history of the aforementioned Foyle Arts Building, which runs below and parallel to Springham Street. It was formerly Foyle College, built in 1814 as a successor to the original Free Grammar School, founded in 1617, inside the not quite finished Wall City by one Matthias Springham. Matthias Springham was a Londoner, a representative of the Honourable the Irish Society who built the Wall City. And when he first came over from London, he brought something with him which he presented to the new citizens of the new city. It's something that's still treasured 400 years later, and it's something that has inspired a major musical event this year. It's in the care of the Dean of St Columns Cathedral, William Martin. OK, so this is 1613, That's right. long before, well, at least 20 years before they started to build the cathedral Absolutely. here. And it so came over as a promise ah. that a, a church would materialise in which this would one day be used. Hence the name, the promised chalice. Indeed. So this had, had no home, really, in no. a sense, for 20 no. years, is no, that the that's, case? That is right. So this is now, well, 400 years on. Yes. Uh, we still have it, and it's still in pretty pristine condition, I must say. So your your predecessors have looked after it all of these years? Well, it's an amazing thought. Yeah, they have, you know, and it's an amazing thought to think of the number of pairs of human hands, you know, which have handled that there, both ordained and lay. And some very illustrious oh, ones over, as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, right. You know, George Barclay, the, the world-famous philosopher. Yes. He would have received communion using that. And using that as well. Um, the Earl Bishop. Frederick, Frederick Augustus, Augustus Harvey, Harvey himself. Right. Yes. Bishop William Alexander. His wife Cecil Francis, mm -hmm. who wrote the hymns. Right, right. You know, all the people who have so come in here for the worship. And they've literally had hands on That's this right. as well. That's right. And, and um, it looks to me at the moment in this light like it's gold, but it's actually a silver chalice. It's a silver gilt chalice. A silver gilt chalice. And it's, it's, it's kind of simple design really isn't it it, it uh, is i can barely read the um even if i had glass, well, it, glasses on have a difficulty it, reading it to be perfectly it, it, honest yeah it varies the coat of arms of the city of london that's more that's most uh, it's, obvious it's on this quite one. yes on the base of the pap that's very clear you get that and the promise was of course that we will build you a church or that, a church will that, be built at that some is stage so, that's it joe quite a church we well, actually did get to build it isn't it well it is and uh it, it has the rare distinction of being the first cathedral of its kind, built after the Reformation. Built after the Reformation in Ireland. And yes, and um, or anywhere for that. I think matter. in the world actually. Get away. We'll have to check right. that. Okay. We'll have to check that. We may as well get away with that now. We'll get somebody correct us. We'll do that. Right. Okay. And um, also too, it was consecrated as a cathedral and as a parish church in the one service. The promised chalice then, brought to the Cathedral of the City by Matthias Springham in 1613, is strand one of the story. And as the 400th anniversary of that event was approaching, in this the year of culture, ideas were broached as to how the occasion might be marked. 
Enter Sam Burnside with strand two of the story. Back in 1989, Sam, the founder and first director of the Verbal Arts Centre, had written a poem entitled The Cathedral, for which he had won the Hennessy Literary Award. There was no bell to bring us in, there was no organ to lift us up, there was no glass cunningly to strain and guide into pigments the light that fell upon the wooden floor that draped across the rows of hardwood benches, light washing the walls, illuminating the message, nailed up there as a warning, Christ died to save the world. The cathedral was Sam Burnside's attempt to explore aspects of the plantation, in particular the mindset, the emotional and spiritual lives of the common people, the planted, as he describes them, rather than the planters. The poem would become the basis for a specially commissioned oratorio entitled The Columba Canticles, and selected verses of the poem, read here by actor Desi Gallagher, were incorporated into the work. But let's stick with Strand 2 for the moment. Uh, you know, the, the promised chalice was sent 400 years ago when the cathedral was built, but before that uh, I envisage the people, the community here, would have worshipped in some kind of, you know, uh, whitewashed room. The poem itself starts, and the process of writing it started around one kind of little image. Now, as I said, the, the, the door of the cathedral here, there's a grave slab with, uh, uh, it's the grave slab of John Hempton of this city. He was a bookseller and a publisher.